the main theme uh, in the long run that if you have to remember something if it is uh, these two are very important obviously all the nobel prizes are important for upsc not only for prince perspective but also from mains perspective and as upsc have showed us in uh, various years it may not be asking questions in the same year for example the nobel prize given in 2022 might come as a mains question in 2024 so knowing more in depth about uh, nobel prizes why what the science behind it is always helpful so you will appreciate and understand them much better once your science and technology classes are done at least some basics will be there right okay apart from that you should also ask some questions like why indians are many indians are not getting nobel prizes or are we doing enough for the r and d research and development is india investing enough are we encouraging science okay so all these things have to be uh, discussed okay next this is the single most important topic that probably is going to decide the agenda for uh, main some questions bihar has launched a caste census i have briefly mentioned uh, in the very beginning days of our classes that there is something called as caste census what is caste census identifying various groups in the society according to your caste so what are the major caste groups so the recent bihar census shows okay unreserved as i said unreserved it's not about general category it's about unreserved then you have sts scs extremely backward classes and other backward classes obc okay now why is this important what are the problems what are the pitfalls okay this is what we have to understand in brief we will come to the bihar article in a while before that we will also go to indian express editorial section in today's indian express also they have spoken about the same thing that is bihar cash census almost all editorials today in every newspaper has discussed more or less about this particular thing you can understand the importance of it and how it will change the dynamics of indian politics also has to be understood now before moving on to that discussion let's simply understand some keywords canada's hollow moral politic okay so if your optional is psir this person is very important for you his name is dr c raja mohan okay so whenever you are writing even gs answers you can cite quote and update lines from mr raja mohan's articles okay he is considered as foremost authority one of the foremost authority on indian foreign policy anything ir if you read his articles for one year you can write more or less almost all the mains questions okay unless they are very static in nature now what is politic moral politic okay there is a term called as a real politic and moral politic as you can understand uh, see <clears throat> normally every society or individuals will have what values everybody will have some values you are respected or appreciated for certain values he is a honest officer he is a corrupt officer yes or no he is an officer with discipline he is an officer without discipline like this your values or traits will decide who you are okay next based on your values you will do something called as actions you will do something called as actions almost all your actions are more or less decided by what your values yes so now the simple question is you define your values or your values define you you are defined by your values or you define your values just think about it honest officer okay you are labeled what honest officer that means somebody has judged you on the basis of what your action Yes or no? You have done something good, so people saw that action and said, "This is a honest action." Okay. Now you are what? A honest officer. 
whose responsibility is it to reinforce the values? Yes or no? That means every single opportunity you have, you have to define what? Your values. You have to reinforce your values. 10 times you found gold on the road. 9 times you gave to the police station. One time you kept. Okay. Are you honest? Yes or no? Every time if you define that value, you are what? A honest person. And you are judged by what? values so your underlying honesty will decide your actions reinforcement of your actions will define your values every time you return to the gold what happened your values have increased or decreased increased nine times you gave but one time you didn't give then your entire value system has collapsed okay this is just understanding of value systems okay in international relations also okay people will act on a principle of morals okay what are morals <coughs> good or bad okay every action you do is called as good or bad action for example america went to pakistan and killed a terrorist called as osama bin laden is it a good thing or a bad thing according to americans it's a very good thing why they are doing something called as responsibility to protect whom american citizens from whom from terrorists Yes or no? Even if I have to go into some other country and kill a terrorist, it's okay for me. Why? I am doing it on the basis of my moral values. I am protecting whom? My citizens. I don't like your president. I will kill him and arrange some dummy president. Is it a good thing? That is not a moral action. Okay. So, in international relations, just like individuals, your actions define you. Okay, your actions define you. These are called as values. Okay, but that values should be based on what? Real politic. What? What is the term? Real politic. What is real politic? Your actions are based on realism. Your actions are based on ground realities. Your actions are based on logic for whom for your own citizens okay so the primary mantra of international relations is national security national security or welfare of which country first my country first okay i will give you a very simple example what is moral politic deciding your actions on morals deciding your actions on morals being emotional if you are a good person you are doing this and all these things now let's imagine india is a moral country do you agree is india a moral country yes it's a moral country india preaches what peace and non-violence yesterday we invested one hour understanding gandhi gandhi promotes peace and non-violence now two countries are fighting russia and Ukraine. Whose fault it is to start a war, we will forget about it. But a war is happening. Then as a peace loving country, what should we do? We should ask both Russia and Ukraine to stop war. We have done that. Okay. After that, what should we do? We should not talk to Russia or Ukraine or encourage them. Yes or no? That is basis on what? Moral politic. Okay. That is moral politic. That means because Russia is fighting, I am not going to buy anything from Russia. It's called moral stand is it good thing in one way it is a good thing but at the same time if russia is giving you cheap oil and india can buy cheap oil and indian inflation will be low that is what national security yes or no food security is also national security no if oil prices increases who will suffer poor people will suffer my job is what welfare of my own country so real politic dictates that forget about russia or ukraine or usa if somebody is selling you cheap oil you should do you should buy oil yes or no that is what moral politic and real politic in simple terms what did usa and other countries try to preach us they said don't buy oil from why morally it is wrong that is what they try to tell india but what did jay shankar say 
it's our national interest to buy cheap oil it's not about russian oil it's cheap if tomorrow russia increases the price are we foolish enough to buy from russia no we are buying from russia only because of cheap prices so that is real politic i hope you understood the difference between real politic and moral politic moral politic means what preaching values and trying to implement them okay now imagine tomorrow if russia uses nuclear weapon if tomorrow russia uses nuclear weapon on whom ukraine okay innocent civilians have been killed should we blame russia or not obviously we have to blame why that is moral politics plus real politics they have done something which cannot be undone yes or no that is a mistake that cannot be recovered but russia have stopped food to somebody else or something else you can also supply food no i mean there are things which you should not cross which you can cross so real politics should dictate rather than moral politics okay second thing there is a quotation people who live in glass houses should not throw stones at others people who live in glass houses should not throw stones at others what does it mean it's english it's not even upsc people who live in glass houses should not throw stones at others what does that mean this is you okay you are living in a glass house this is me i'm shouting at you you got angry you are throwing stones first what will break glass. your own house will break that means damage is done to you more so the the simple understanding of this is what before you preach somebody morals what should you do you should follow morals if india does not respect human rights can we go to pakistan and preach pakistan gyan that you should follow human rights if india is not taking care of its minorities okay can we go to pakistan and say you should also take care of your minorities no that means you have to implement morals values first only then you can teach others okay so this is the basic keyword you have to remember moral political real politic so whatever canada is saying right now human rights sovereignty rule of law and all these things canada should also respect what sovereignty yes or no are i told you that one of your citizens is a terrorist or probably he is planning some threat against my country i gave you a list what should you do you should at least control him at least you should give some evidence against him or at, at least you should say that you know he is not doing such activities you should stop all those activities in the name of freedom citizenship fundamental rights and all these things you are harboring a terrorist then the terrorist is a threat to some other country i hope you understand right so the bigger problem here is the world does not have a definition of terrorist there is no single definition of terrorist who is a terrorist somebody who tries to propagate violence for an ideology that is one way to understand i believe in some ideology and i am promoting that ideology through what violence how i will go and detonate myself in a crowded place okay then i will release pamphlet or video saying i kill all those people so that you will listen to my ideology okay so is killing innocent people wrong yes or no 100% wrong but the problem is one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter for example uh, the the taliban or somebody killed somebody okay for taliban that fellow is a hero but for the people who were killed for him he is a terrorist it's very difficult to define the term terrorism but if in the guise of techni uh, technical details if we keep postponing the definition of the term terrorism terrorism what will happen countries like canada and others will always use freedom of speech etc to protect elements which are radical in nature i won't call them outrightly terrorists but we can always call people who are radical in nature will be easy to become terrorists i hope you understand the differences today hindu front page what other article is important 
टुडे हिंदू फ्रंट पेज आई एस वॉट इज आर्टिकल दिल्ली पोलिस अरेस्ट थ्री विद लिंक्स फॉर आई एस आई ओके दैट मीन्स इंडिया हैव ए क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हू इज ए टेररिस्ट बट देर इज अ डिसग्रीमेंट बिटवीन इंडिया एंड कैनेडा ओके दिस मच यू अंडरस्टूड ओके फाइन नाउ वील कम टू दिस आर्टिकल फर्स्ट देर इज एयर पोल्यूशन प्रॉब्लम इन डेली and in response to the air pollution problem in delhi every year during the winter season we announce a program called as graded response action plan the plan is what graded response action plan this is also main question the name says what graded response your response is graded what is graded you can see the chart right okay if the air pollution is moderate these are the actions you will take if your air pollution is very severe you will do this if your air pollution is in emergency level these are the things you should do so your response to air pollution is graded i hope you understand level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 like this you will do on a graded level okay hmm. why this is important india is capital to most polluted cities in the world is yes or no many indian cities are under the list of most polluted cities in the world by breathing polluted air what will happen indians will develop respiratory diseases non communicable diseases and their daily average lifetime will also come down okay one of the fundamental principles or fundamental values is what right to life with dignity is yes or no you should be having a healthy life but if because of air pollution your life is coming down then whose responsibility is it states responsibility okay so that is the bottom line you have to remember so graded response action plan can go to any length why for your health for example diwali crackers should not be burnt a celebration of through crackers is banned can you go to supreme court yes you can okay but supreme court will say see for your own sake because health doesn't only affect you it will affect entire society for the welfare of everybody else i have the right to ban the crackers okay your right to livelihood is there that means you you are a truck driver okay i will say delhi for one week trucks are not allowed can you go to court yes why your right to livelihood has been hampered but can supreme court ban the trucks yes why people lives are more important than your livelihood and after that you have to be alive to do a business so if you can read the chart okay the basic things start with stop garbage burning that is solid waste management anyhow it's a crime in india we generally bring everything and throw a match stick okay that is technically a crime according to law that is a crime you should be fined for that okay but anyhow normal practice we should stop burning the leaves and in winters what will happen people will feel very cold in north india what will they do they will bring tires old diesel boxes put a match stick and sit around it for the sake of warmth what are you burning rubber tires what are you releasing very very toxic chemicals but you are doing it for sake of warmth are you aware of all these things no for you all you need is warmth atm you know the watchmen near atm they cannot afford clean energy no they will burn whatever they can find okay so it starts from there and if you look at the emergency what are the emergency measures it even allows stopping the constructions okay why construction construction and air pollution what is the link
what will happen during construction air pollution will come up construction is one of the reasons of maximum air pollution dust particles are released only because of demolition and the construction okay so according to iit delhi study not only vehicular pollution but also construction is a major contributor to air pollution okay trucks why trucks because they release heavy emissions diesel trucks old trucks and all those things and there are also schemes like odd even scheme what is odd even scheme what are odd vehicles when vehicle number ending with odd numbers only are allowed the other day even numbers are allowed okay some people purchased two cars just for this sake okay you only increased vehicular pollution okay see it, it has genuinely it has only its own implications but the problem is promotion of public transport okay so i hope you understood what is graded response action plan the thing is according to air pollution your punishment will increase or your steps will increase there are days where you have to literally announce holiday for school children you will ask children not to come out of the houses okay so while we can blame all the anthropogenic factors that is all the human factors for air pollution there is also some natural factors delhi because of its geographical location if the air is not moving if the air is not moving then all the pollution will stay there only okay if the movement of air is there automatically pollution will also move so in december or november you will also see in hindu paper articles all the way from punjab haryana till bihar that lucknow this coast okay this entire region will be covered under smoke so not only delhi entire north india the so called hindi belt will be under blanket of air pollution so while humans also are very important reason geography also plays a role okay so that is what this article discusses this article discusses some good things what are some good things this year we have announced graded response action plan very good not only delhi but also punjab and haryana are working together why there is a concept called as burning of the crops i mean after produce of the crops stubble burning okay so because whatever you do in punjab and haryana will affect whom delhi lucknow and entire north india so all the states have to come together so this is one example of cooperative federalism this is an example of what cooperative federalism so delhi's graded response action plan is an example for cooperative federalism then this article also talks about okay. empirical data so sir will all these steps if delhi government takes will it reduce air pollution delhi government is saying that 40% reduction has been done in air pollution by all its steps okay so is it a good thing or a bad thing 40% reduction is a decent amount of thing but at the same time if geography is correct see if the meteorological conditions are turned favorable then delhi will have a clean time if the meteorological conditions are not in favor what happens it will be very bad for delhi so we have to pray that weather also cooperates at the same time humans also cooperate so that we can get away from harsh polluted winters okay so just remember for the mains answer writing sake what is graded response action plan it is only something that you find in capital of the country if it is hyderabad or some other city probably we wouldn't be discussing this much but a nation's capital which is also considered as one of the most polluted cities in the world what can you do for that problem okay so as i keep mentioning you are a upsc aspirant you are a bureaucrat you are a policy maker your job is not only to find problems your job is to find solutions so china beijing one of once upon a time it is considered as one of the most polluted cities in the world so they have done some steps by taking some actions china has reduced its air pollution so population is very similar to india no if china can do that delhi also can but it will take the cooperation of union government surrounding states of delhi 
people of delhi so on and so forth okay now what other steps can we take to reduce air pollution if you are a collector if you are a policy maker if you have to suggest something to prime minister modi or mr kejriwal that is cm of delhi okay what suggestions will you give them electric vehicles okay so delhi have electric vehicle policy they are encouraging electric vehicles what else something any unique thing something that you think should be done are you are not aware like he said electric vehicles what else can we do encouraging people to use public transport so if i go to delhi metro there is metro literally every 1 minute there is a metro train every 1 minute my wait time is what 1 minute still i don't find seats forget about seats i don't even find space to get into the metro you must have seen such situations right okay so that means delhi is overcrowded still we have to increase the public transport so that is why delhi have brought in something called as integrated transport system that means metro electric vehicles rail everything is connected that means you have you have to travel from one part of delhi to another part they have to make it very very easy for you okay what else good think it must be see it might it doesn't matter if it is already being done but for you at least it's an exercise for your brain right control sabal burning so government have brought in from decomposers all the way till pellets yes and even tractor like things to cut the stubble very cleanly so that nothing is left to burn hmm. what else circular economy we can encourage circular economy okay in stubble burning related stuff everything hmm okay can we declare work from home yes or no why are you traveling to work so work from home can be allowed wherever it can be allowed will that reduce the burden on public transport sure huh? yes hmm sorry plantation in barren lands that is afforestation has to be encouraged okay you can also bring in a concept called as sponge cities sponge cities it means more water more vegetation within the city for example delhi have lot of roofs if all the roofs are covered with some greenery uh, you know all the walls sides of the buildings can be covered with vertical gardens that will also reduce some kind of impact on pollution hmm. even pollution towers have been created in delhi big big towers so that it will attract what it's like air purifier for the city hmm. using biotechnology for example ethanol blending mm hmm one type of bacteria can be used to absorb the pollution okay even simple things like changing the fuel electric vehicles that can be in included yes P you can also bring in pm life change in lifestyle okay what else see hydrogen based vehicles okay any any change in fossil fuel based vehicles is a good thing these solutions cannot be done in one year so whenever you write a mains answer you can segregate them into immediate steps short term and long term what can be a good long term step first of all develop tier 1 tier 2 cities in and around the states of 
Delhi. Why should everybody come to Hyderabad, Delhi, Pune, Bangalore, Mumbai? Why can't small towns capture and keep the people there? Yes or no? Many people migrate to Delhi for what? Better livelihood. Yes or no? If we can provide better livelihood in tier 1, tier 2 cities, the burden on the cities will be reduced. See, if you ask someone like me, very, very radical answer, sir, sell, sir, tell me something hatke, like mind blowing. Okay, I will say, make Hyderabad winter capital. Okay, let everybody come to Delhi. If you want to do winter sessions of parliament and all these things, let them come to Hyderabad. Automatically, lot of burden will be reduced. Okay, but all these are European. They are not practical. I, I hope you understand, right? Radical solutions are very easy. But what should be done? implementable solution tomorrow you are an IAS officer you are working in Delhi and your daughter or son have asthma she or he have a breathing problem don't you feel bad you cannot give up your job at the same time she is not happy so we have to think in a very very sensitive way that it's not only about finances it's not only about politics it's about what human life quality of life quality of life needs compassion and entire design of the city should be centered around people with such respiratory issues and i don't know how many of you have been to delhi literally it's a gas chamber during the time of diwali you close your doors you put curtains do whatever you want to do okay not a single building in delhi will not be filled with smoke okay literally you will you'll feel that uh, pungent you know, the Diwali cracker smell filling your lungs. And if you travel in a bike or something in Delhi, you can literally come out and remove the black suit from your nose. Okay, or when you cough in the morning, you'll definitely find some black suit. That is the seriousness. I'm talking about my experience in 2011. You can imagine how much pollution might have increased in the last 10 years. Okay, so the, the problem is very real. But the, the but the reaction is also very real. What? Only during November and December we will talk about air pollution. Maximum January. After February, it will subside. Next year, when will we discuss again? October, November, December. So this cycle has to change. Long term steps have to be implemented. But that is not only the problem of Delhi, that is a problem of everybody. All the states surrounding Delhi should come together and solve the problem okay you can also look for air quality index that is a prelims question air quality index what is air quality index it tells you how polluted your city is or your surrounding is it will tell you some basic details like particulate matter 2.5 particulate matter 10 that means if you are inhaling more pollution you will suffer more Okay, so World Health Organization says it should not cross certain limits. Almost in every Indian city, it crosses 5 to 13 times also, more than that. So, we are much way, way, way above safe limits. Anyhow, we are breathing polluted air. At least we should breathe the least polluted air. Okay, these are the challenges. Understood graded response action plan? Because I am setting the template from today, you will definitely see it again and again and again and Hindu or Indian Express will start writing articles on ways to reduce air pollution. Nothing new. Okay. <coughs> right. Lastly, coming back to this. Hmm. Why it's a good thing? Why it's a bad thing? We will try to understand. We will try to understand it using a simple what is data driven policy making we have already discussed this but we will try to understand who is the poorest man in the city or who is the poorest man in the district? Yes or no? Now, now imagine there are nine blocks within a particular village or a particular district or a particular state. Okay. I should know which 
set of population lives or dominates which constituency or which particular area so that I can do what? Targeting. What does that mean? Let's imagine these four blocks have more number of EBC, extremely backward classes, SCs and STs. Okay. As a government, if I have to find people okay, who are poor, weak and vulnerable, which four districts will I focus more? Those four districts. How did I come to know about that? Through data. See, again, sir, you could also do that by identifying or asking people, not asking their cash. You can ask them which houses have ACs. Yes or no? Just because somebody belongs to SC or ST, that doesn't make them poor, right? Okay. I can have a district full of SC people, but at the same time, they can also have cars and ACs. So there are multiple ways to identify poverty. Okay, here it's not only about poverty, it's about what? Cast census. <coughs> Sorry, my bad. But why am I identifying cast? So that I will know subgroups within a cast. Now imagine there is a cast called as 1. Okay, cast 1A, cast 1B, cast 1C, cast 1D. Okay, who is poor, who is rich within the caste? Normally, I can say example wise, one is SC. Okay, caste one is SC. In general perception, I am giving reservation to all one people, that is all SC people. But within SC, for example, there is an IAS officer. His daughter belongs to same caste. Who is reaping the reservation? The well of within SCs are getting the benefit. Now imagine 1D. Within 1D, there are 1000 people. That means the entire subcast within SCs, there are 1000 people. Only 10 of them are graduates. Who actually deserves a reservation? 1D or 1A? 1A. So example wise only. Don't take it personally or anything. All this is for illustration purposes. 1A have good education, government jobs, high salaries etc. 1D have only 10 graduates. What does 10 graduates in 2023 tell you? That means 990 people are not even having basic graduation. With, within them we don't even know how many completed school. Probably only 300 completed 10th class. Can we call them as backward? Why? They don't have basic education. They don't have basic access to health. Okay, this is a positive argument of the entire debate that by identifying caste and subcaste, it will be easy for me to help the poorest and the weakest. Yes or no? See, one more way to look at the things is very simple. As I keep saying, we have unreserved category, we have OBC, we have EWS, we have SC, and ST. This is the macro classification. So we are giving representative, sorry, we are giving affirmative action to all these groups. This is unreserved. So it doesn't belong to anyone. But OBC have 27% reservation. SC have 16.6% reservation. ST have 7.5% reservation. EWS have 10% only. Yes. What is the reservation for ST? For SC, 16 point, 16 okay. Who, who gave these classifications? In 1991, there is a very famous case, 1991-92, Indra Swane judgment. In Indra Swane judgment, after the Mandal reservation system, okay, we capped unreserved as 50%. You do the math, the rest should not cross. 50%. But EWS is a recent inclusion. I am not going into technical details or accuracy. I am trying to explain you the simple logic. If you are an OBC in India, you have how much reservation? 
27% reservation. But OBC is not a homogeneous group. OBC is a group of hundreds of subcasts. Hundreds of subcasts. Now, what Bihar government is arguing is by, by identifying various subcasts, we can focus on the weakest. We can focus on the weakest. We can focus on the people who are not getting the benefits. Why? Even within OBC, who are reaping the reservation? Only certain groups are reaping the reservation. Even within SC, who are reaping the reservation? Only certain tribes are getting maximum benefits. There are even groups called as PVTGs, particularly vulnerable tribal groups. That means all of them are ST. But within ST, some people are getting the advantage of reservation and government jobs, while others are not even getting the benefits. So, by identifying each and every group and segregating them into subcast, subgroups, caste census, more data is available. So, what will I do with the data? I am supposed to use it for one and only one purpose that is welfare. Why did I, why did I identify the poorest man in the line? So that I can give him food education, health, living standards, house, electricity, whatever he needs. Yes or no? Now, this is the positive side of the story. You understood this much? By identifying the poorest man, I can help him. But there is also a concept called as social engineering. What is social engineering? Till now, let's say A group that means within OBC there is a group called as A. A political leader is winning. All the OBCs are voting for whom? Mr. A. Why? A belongs to OBC, their caste. Now, government came and showed that we they are actually very backward. B group is very backward. Now, a political party will come and say, I will not give ticket to A community, I will give ticket to B community. Why? B are much weaker than A. Okay. So, I can use it for political disaffection. I can use it for social engineering. I hope you understand. I don't know if you understand, but politics also have to have some common sense. That means, if I am the chief minister, I will say, see, till now, only A community in OBC is got benefited. If I am elected chief minister, I will give seats to B, D, and I will also go to SCA, SCB, SCC. So I will say, I will say, wide representation has been given. So vote for me. So the entire purpose is what? Welfare. But I can totally convert it into vote bank politics. I can convert it into vote bank politics. Also, I can also convert it into a debate between lower caste and upper caste. See, if you open Twitter today, people will say, in Bihar, what is the percentage of general category? Only 15% of the population belongs to unreserved category or so-called upper caste. But what is the percentage of reservation given? See, this is an illogical argument, but we will still entertain that. 50% of the seats are reserved for unreserved. Okay, but their share in population is only 15%. What is the share of OBC? Not 27. There are also called as extremely backward class. So, if you combine do these two numbers, it crosses more than 60% or 50%. But what is the reservation given to them? Only 27%. So, reservation system should be proportional in nature. You understand? Okay. I can use this as a political tool rather than an empowerment tool. Okay. So, I hope you understand the dynamics. So, this is what you have to understand on day one. So, caste census is good? Yes. It will tell people where they stand in the entire society. What percentage of subgroups are there? It will tell. But will it be used for productive purposes? Maybe. Hopefully. That is what we should 
hope for the welfare of the country for the sake of the country but now if this is used for asking for more reservations then that will become what a problematic scenario clear reservation again is not at all a bad thing reservation is a tool for what empowerment reservation is a means to an end what is the end welfare of the society welfare of every individual in the society that is the purpose of affirmative action that is the purpose of social justice but in india unfortunately reservations have become a end in itself it is no longer treated as a mean it is considered as a end clear so we should not convert this debate into reservation versus merit it's a debate about reservation and welfare what did you do in the last 75 years did you actually empower every person in the line or did you empower only few people in the line if only few people got benefited then whose fault is it state's fault state did not implement the reservation system properly got my point yes so you will hear 10000 variations from today onwards you will be bombarded with a lot of articles i'm i'm going to enter them slowly 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 but today don't take sides it's good bad right wrong not our burden okay but data is always important for policy making data is always important for policy making more the data better the policy making for example if i give you a current affairs test okay all of you scored 10 out of 10 then you are good in what searching <laughs> are you are good in current affairs okay but only one person got 10 out of 10 everybody else got 2 out of 10 then what should i do i should focus on the 10 of 10 or 2 of 10 i should talk to the people who are getting 2 of 10 why and some person didn't even attempt a single question i should give more attention to that student why did i conduct a test not to know the knowledge but no to know whom to focus yes or no that is the purpose of data data tells you where to focus where not to focus i don't even need to bother about the 10 by 10 student he or she will do fine without without my help but i should give more focus to 0 out of 10 or 2 out of 10 got my point yes so that is how data should help the society but if you form a union all 2 out of 10 people will come together and we will start fighting for free marks covid pass in corona time we have seen in the andhra pradesh right what did students do students came together and this a covid pass i didn't understand what is covid pass because of covid i could not study have to pass me compulsory and a good number of useless people have become 10th pass why <laughs> covid pass okay so that is not how things are supposed to be understood yes yeah hmm say there will be good amount of research if you want to follow anyone for some positive argument say again i am ta- not taking sides but if you want to defend this move caste census is good or not okay it is not going to stop today why already uh, the opposition parties in india have announced that if we win we will implement caste census in entire country okay but government of india is not so interested in releasing the data and this is not a new debate in 2011 the then congress government have conducted a survey called as socio economic caste census sccc report okay the details of that report are not totally out like fully government did not endorse it so governments are afraid that if we give more numbers to people it will be misused okay there is a cephalogist the uh, yogendra yadav his name is yogendra yadav if you are interested you can read yogendra yadav articles on this particular debate okay again read them with pinch of salt but you will get the positive side of why caste reservation should be there tomorrow or day after tomorrow some other person will come and write how they will be misused okay and one day we will come to a way forward so when you have to write a main answer you will say these are the positive things these are the negative things way forward way forward is what data should be used for welfare not for what bank politics simple answer what my point yes any questions
See whatever we have discussed are three most important topics moral politic, real politic, graded response action plan and cash census. Again, I am taking the classes to your level. We can spend only one hour on cash census or graded response action plan. We can start about how Supreme Court came and gave the advice and all these things. The problem is not with content, the problem is with familiarity. At your level, you are just supposed to know there is something called as graded response action plan. That's all. At the same time, at your level, you are also supposed to know just cash census. Okay. Yeah. Any questions in today's discussion, whatever we have discussed so far? Anything that you didn't understand, please let me know. Read editorials of Indian Express if time permits. Right. See you all tomorrow then. Yes, please. Yes. Huh. Hmm. 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 See, state's patronage. The, the first thing is the crime is committed by the state. Who, see, we, we cannot officially say the state officially sanctioned the crime. Okay, but some crime has been done by the state, state missionary. Okay, who is going to inquire? State missionary only. Who will punish it? State missionary only. That means within the system, the, the, the wrongdoer and the inquirer, both of them belong to the state. Okay, then automatically there will be a lethargy or red tapeism from the state. Think about it, Priyanka Reddy case. Hyderabad famous encounter case, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, the rapists have been encountered. Okay. Who is doing the inquiry? State. Who probably allowed the encounter to happen? State. Will the judgment come? You understand the problem? So my, my simple solution, uh, my simple suggestion of understanding this is whenever law and order, that is especially police are involved, okay, police will not be happy to punish its own brothers brethren yes or no see see uh, and people will always consider our politicians will always think in the vote bank politics for example a tribal hamlet has been burnt okay example wise only a group of tribal villages have been burnt by whom upper caste people okay if i punish the upper caste people i will lose the votes of upper caste See, you understand, right? Who are majority of my voters? Let's imagine upper caste. They are the powerful people. They will dominate media. They will dominate votes. They will go dominate government uh, offices and all these things. They will decide who will win, who will lose. So I cannot willingly punish a upper caste person. And not only in Tamil Nadu, you take Gujarat. Okay, during Godra riots recently, just before the B Gujarat elections, okay, people who were convicted in the Godra riots, 11 members have been released. Okay, even Supreme Court took notice of this. Okay, so from a politician point of view, it's always about vote bank politics. From law and order perspective, there are always people who will fight for the justice. Okay, but the justice will be very time taking and very long. We should cry it took 30 years. At the same time, we should be happy in the end justice has been delivered. So as Martin Luther King says, okay, the long moral arc of justice bends towards justice. And it took 30 years, but you got some justice. And people will at least go to courts believing one day we will get justice. If the judgment came in favor of the police officer, do you think you will believe courts again? You get my point? And system law, there are some good people who are still doing the good work. There is a lawyer who might have fought for the tribals. There is a judge who gave a unbiased judgment there is a police officer who gave unbiased evidence against his own colleagues yes or no there is a person who inquired the entire case some good people are there in the system but the system will bury these people 
they will be punished not rewarded okay so that is why it says if you reward the honesty honesty will come or justice will come very quickly yes one more last example i will tell you uh, babri masjid demolition okay government of india appointed a single person for the first time in north delhi and as far as i know there is only one person committee that is liberhan committee it took 19 years to submit the report one nine years just to inquiry what <laughs> the report can you understand what will happen in 19 years if a crime happens in 19 days people's memories will change i will forget everything 19 years later an entire generation has even forgotten what happened in babri demolition okay or 2002 godura riots or uh, so many cases even jammu and kashmir so many cases have been atrocities have been done by the army and officers against the locals okay all those cases took 30 40 years also right so justice delayed is justice denied at the same time justice hurried is justice buried okay you cannot give judgments very quickly at the same time you cannot take 30 years so all these are moral lessons for a society to ask itself okay clear it's a good question i hope you got the answer right it's a state lack of political will if it is about a politician or some opposition party within one week they will provide what evidence if the state doesn't if the state is not willing to give the evidence it will take 19 years politics okay yeah that's all so bottom line if you have to write something technically in upsc answers you have to write it like this law and order should be freed from the burden of politicians then law and order will deliver justice very quickly but if the police or executive is under the rule of thumb sorry under the tight thumb of politician he cannot give honest evidence that's all okay right yeah see you all tomorrow then thank you anything see ekkada ekkada ite political will untundo judgments will come very quickly and the the missionary will move very quickly not judgments if there is no political will the movement will be struck thank you all